What's going on guys? We are out here on the Clarence River today and I'm going to be throwing around this little guy in my hands right now. It is a Z-Man finesse frog in the 2.75 inch range. Great for surface, great for skipping under boat docks, great for skipping under branches and overgrown shrubs, which for the Clarence River there is a lot of. So let's get into it. How do we work it? What stuff are we going to use? What, uh, what setup on the rod and reel do we need? Let's dive in and uh, let's unpack this. down into the gear and the setup that you guys are going to need I'd recommend a light rod so you can really get that nice tip action to load up to fire that plastic in and under all the structure that you need I'm using an Akuma Helios HSS 701L the L stands for light uh, you got your mediums which is a HSS 701M and your heavies and stuff too but today we're talking about the HSS 701L I've got it paired up with the Akuma Inspira ISX20B. So it's about a thousand size reel. It's, uh, it's a great reel from Akuma. We've brought out some new ones in the ITX, but this one was on, so we're going with that one for the video. Uh, the braid that I'm using, I'm actually using Platypus Pulse in an eight pound at the moment. It's the eight strand, so it's the X8 and the leader that I'm using is a Platypus Stealth FC, also in an eight pound. Usually I do run about 10 pound for surface, but um, that eight pound just, it doesn't get too caught up in the water when you're trying to skip. So I've, um, that's what I've run with, but eight or a 10 seems to be like a pretty good go-to for bass. Uh, it's gonna get you out of trouble pretty good. And that, uh, that Stealth FC leader by Platypus is great. It can handle a lot of action <laughs> against anything that you're gonna throw at it. The hook that I'm using is a chin locks. It's a finesse series chin lock, so it floats. It's sitting nice and buoyant for that plastic to sit right on top of the water. It's in a size 1OL, which is about the perfect size, you can see there, for these 2.75 inch finesse frogs. I've got the white. I've got a lot of other colors that I use, but the water's pretty dirty at the moment, so the white seems to be pretty good. Um, that's about it for the setup. So. Let's go into the structure that we're going to need to target. So the structure that you want to be targeting for surface is if it is sunny, like the sun's just starting to come out now, you're going to want to see all these shady pockets. So I'm on these big tall rock bluff walls, which is going to be throwing a lot of shade, which is great. If you're on a bank, say there's something over there where there isn't those rock walls or much shade at all, not a bad thing, because if you do find a bit of structure that's holding a bit of shade, it doesn't matter whether it's this big or, you know, this big, those bass are going to condense up and into those, that shady, uh, those shady pockets, which is where you want to get that plastic. It's not guaranteed, but it's a really good place to start. As you can see, we've got some grass clumps here. We've got a lot of overhanging structure, a lot of overhanging shrubs and branches. And this guy is the perfect weapon to fire it and skip it right up and under there. Now, it is weedless. You do have to just make sure that that hook doesn't protrude out from it when you're skipping because it sometimes happens. But uh, what you can do is you can dive back in here. When you pull your hook through, you can actually dive back into the plastic and just sort of loop it back over through the plastic a little bit and it sort of creates a little lock on your lure. All right, so we've come over to the bank now. As you can see behind me, we've got some little grass coming up through there. Got a big grass clump there. Those grass clumps over there are great for holding bass. 
there is just something about it the bass can get right up and in there it's one of my favorite things to cast at down here on the clarence so let's uh let's go and cast this in there and see if we can't get something pretty much the aim of what you're trying to do don't be worried about getting this snag like i said before because that hook is all tucked up inside the plastic even if it's a bad cast and you fire it 10 foot high into a tree just slow roll it out it's going to bounce untangle and come straight out same thing don't be worried about skipping it too far or into the gnarliest stuff like you wouldn't cast a jig head in there and if you wouldn't cast a jig head in there because there's too much stuff that is the perfect thing that's exactly where you want to cast it the nastiest most overgrown tangled stuff fire that in there because that's where the bass they push right up they push right up and they sit under it just waiting for something to come past which is hopefully this lure right here so let me uh let me try and show you exactly what i'm talking about Let's see if we can't get one so you kind of want to you want to pepper these places you want to try and get it right up in as many little nooks and crannies and crevices as you can and as close to the structure as you can is quite important I'll just turn the camera off for a second. And uh, this guy just happened off one of these little, I don't know if you can see that, if that's in camera view, but off these little, little grass clumps. In the water, I just fired it right up there and he smacked that one. So I guess we'll just keep on doing that, see if we can get some more. Shoulders though. There we go, on a little froggy. Watch that in slow-mo and see if you can scare me. for another one. Frogs for days. Little fella. Smacked it hard though. Surface too. Do the frog just dives? Yeah. That hasn't quite made it up to the surface Come yet. Back out, yeah. Frog fishing. Ooh. On the froggy. It is a pretty easy lure to use, to throw. There's nothing special that you have to do. I guess the key components are just to make sure that that hook is always inside the plastic. You're always checking it. Every time you retrieve that plastic, you want to make sure that that plastic is sitting above that chin lock and it doesn't come up to the line. And just make sure that that hook's not sitting out exposed, looking nasty, where it's going to snag up and it's not going to swim right. You'll know. You'll skip it in or you'll cast it in. It's just a sort of a slow to medium roll out enough to get those little legs to just like be bubbling away walking away in the water making some noise and it, you'll see if it doesn't do it you'll either have one leg that's not right or the thing won't swim right you won't hear it you won't see it it'll just it, it will look wrong <clears throat> so it's a pretty basic 
you can either cast it, skip it. I like to keep my rod tip high. So keeping the rod tip high is just keeping that plastic sort of angled up out of the water to make sure that it doesn't dive down. Every now and then you might just get a little bit of drag under the water and it'll, it'll go under just um, after the cast as soon as you retrieve it. So keeping that rod tip high in the air. And when I say high guys, I don't mean like up here. Just, you know, a, a nice 45 angled upwards as opposed to holding it down here. It's a big difference. I don't know if you guys can see it. You probably can't on camera, but there is a big difference between holding that up there on that kind of angle. You can hear it, you can see it, as opposed to down here, it's, it wants to pull that line down and pull the nose of the plastic down. And it might still get hit, but it's not creating the best possible scenario for that lure to make as much noise and as much vibration as you can. So I've approached these, these cane grass edges all up through here. It's probably a little bit shallow, but I'm gonna give it a crack anyway. The sun's starting to come out, so there's not a whole lot of cover for these fish where this cane is at the moment. You can either cast or skip it right in there. It's not really the structure that I prefer to, to throw these frogs, but you can do it. But what I do want to show you is just how weedless these are. So to prove it, pretty much just how snagless these are, you just make sure everything's tucked up and in there. Like I, can't, like I say, like you just keep checking every time you pull it in. I'm gonna throw this just into it. I'm not gonna cast it into it. Now, any other lure you did that, it's not coming back. Or there, <laughs> there's a small chance that it's coming back. But to show you just how weedless this setup is with that TT chin locks and the Z-Man finesse frog. Perfect weedless combination. Now to demonstrate that, watch this. You can see that cane behind me. I'm gonna cast this square into it and then you just slow roll it out. So that's in there, right? That is in there. What you do, slowly roll it out. even swimming right come straight back out that hooks tucked up and in there easy so guys don't be scared to throw it into some gnarly structure because it's going to come out chances are 99 percent chance it is going to come out just fine you don't need to try and do all this stuff and try and jerk it out just slow roll it out stay calm and it's going to come straight back out for you there is a bunch of different colors in the range that you can check out. I've got a few on me at the moment. I might switch it up today, just depending on where I'm at and what I'm feeling. But the key is just keep switching it. Find what color works best for you, whether it be your favorite color, whether it be what's working. At the end of the day, the fish are really going to respond to those legs that are trickling through the water and the places that you throw it. So make sure casting is key. Casting out, you know, four meters away from the bank not going to be great but casting right up under the bank in places where you can't get any other lure is the perfect place to be targeting the bass with these finesse frogs so that is it guys that is the z-man finesse frog 2.75 inch atop the helio setup that i've got the platypus braid if you want any more information make sure you head over to tacklepractics.com.au check out their facebook check out their instagram while you're doing that make sure you subscribe to my channel on youtube keegan painter fishing head over to all my socials facebook and instagram as well it's all under the same banner drop some comments make sure you give me the thumbs up shoot some questions if you like i'm only happy to answer them Go down to your tackle store, get some Z-Man finesse frogs and uh, cast in, hold on, have fun. Thanks guys.